Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the court reporting series that I am doing on my channel. If you haven't watched episode one of the court reporting series, I will tag that here. Definitely go watch that because I feel like you need to know what was in episode one to watch this, which is episode two. But we're going to be learning a little bit more about the machine that we use as court reporters and this is actually called a stenography machine. I have my assistant to help me. But this is what the machine looks like. And so it is very odd looking. And as you can tell right away, this is not a normal keyboard, which some people think um, court reporters use a normal keyboard to type and keep up with what everyone says, but no, this is what we use. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today, how to put this machine kind of together, what some of these buttons mean and how it works. I'm not going to go too in depth on like how to write words, um, or like let you learn how to write certain words, but I may do that in future episodes if you guys are interested in that, but basically just how the keys kind of work and how they can create words. But that's why I really want you to go watch episode one if you haven't already so that you can even know what a court reporter is if you don't know what that is and what we do and why we use this machine. So go watch that if you haven't. But I'm excited to talk about this because this is basically our whole job. Okay, so there's just really two parts to putting the machine together. There is the tripod, the stand for the machine, and then there is the head of the machine. And I know that this seems pretty basic, but I remember on the first day of school for court reporting, they literally showed us how to do this. So I thought I would show you guys too. And how you acquire one of these machines is you can just buy them outright, but I actually got mine used through a previous court reporter and so I was able to get some money off, but they can be quite expensive and I think I did payments for it, so it helped my credit. And also starting out, you don't have that much money until you start really working, so that helped as well and you do need one before you start working, obviously. But yeah, you can buy one outright as well um, and there's a bunch of websites for that. I will also link below um, the website that I use for most of my corporate needs. So this is what I do before every job. This is just opening the tripod and then there is a little handle right here. Lefty loosey, pull it up to about the height you want and you can adjust it. So this is the tripod and I have it set down. And as you can see on the top of the tripod, this is the top of the tripod and as you can see like there's this little doodad right here and actually on the bottom of the machine as well you can see that basically there's like the little keyhole for it so when you put the head of the machine onto the tripod you want to try to match those up as best you can and you can kind of feel it go down in there and then you twist it to the left and you'll hear it click like that and now it's in place and now you can turn it any which way you need to depending on how you're sitting so i have it now with me and I'm sitting in a pretty decent chair to right and of course you're in a different chair every time you go into a depot if you do depots but obviously this is way too high for me you pretty much want it level um, with your elbows so you don't want your arms like this and you don't want them like this you want it pretty level and as relaxed as you can so this is obviously too high so I'm just going to go back down here to this lever bring it to the left and bring it down to a comfortable height for me and that's pretty much it now the machine is ready to be written on. Okay, so I'm up here, but I have it pointed at my machine so you can see it. Um, and the reason why I have these little Velcro things is because sometimes I will put a um, wireless keyboard up here just for quicker resources when I am scoping later with my work. Cause really while you're at a deposition, you don't need to see the screen. I hardly ever look at my screen, but you know, you do need it in general. So. I'm gonna show you how to turn this thing on. So every machine is different, uh, or most machines are different. There's different brands, different um, kinds of machines, but these are pretty common. I think this is called a Diamante ma machine. Um, and I know a lot of people who have this one and I've had it for years and probably will continue to have it for years. These things last forever. But this is how you turn on this particular model. So the very left button, and yes, it is a Diamante. And then here is your blank screen. And as you write, it will come up on your screen. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Can y'all see that? I think you can. Now there's different settings with how you can see the screen. So uh, yes, new view. Um, there you go. You can see that I actually, what I did write in steno, which is basically what we call our shorthand language. We call that steno. Um, you can see I wrote my name. Um, I have it programmed to come out as my name, but really what I was writing in Steno is this. So I will talk a little bit more about this obviously later, but yeah, I have it programmed to come out as Chloe. So you can set it up as that. I don't really, again, look at this very much, so I don't really care what my view is, but in school, obviously you probably do. 
Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about these keys and what they do. Um, and I'm not going to go into too much detail because obviously it's super involved and takes a while to learn. But the basics of what our machine does and what these keys are. And again, sorry if it's annoying that you can't see me. But I need to be able to film this um, where you can see the machine. So, um, Michael's actually helping me and he was asking me some questions. Just basic questions that he would want to know. So, it kind of helps me know what to tell you guys and the first question he asked was what this top bar does up here and this is actually called our number bar so as you can see if I press it I don't know if you guys can see on the screen but there is a little number bar so if I so I'm just pressing just the bar so we can write obviously any number that we need to because people say bajillions of numbers all the time so this first key right here is going to be one two three four and actually our five is down here our zero is here our six is up here seven eight nine um i know that's kind of confusing but basically those are our numbers and i will go back to these down here but how you write an actual number because again just by me pressing the bar it has just a number but if you hold the bar and this first key down together, so basically pressing in between the line together, it brings both keys down at the same time, and that creates a number one, as you can see on the screen. So if I push down these two, that's number two, three, four. This is a number five, this is a number zero. Sorry, I explained that wrong without having my hands on it. Sometimes it gets confusing because it's such a muscle memory. It's really crazy how you learn this, but this is a five, this is a zero, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this key over here is kind of an extra key. Some machines don't have this. I will talk more about that. And this key in the middle is kind of similar. Now I'm gonna put up on the screen right here in this little corner, um, basically the layout of our machine, but now it actually has labeled what each key means. And this is what we use at the start of school and we have for a while and then of course it gets taken away so that we can really memorize this. I will also leave this linked down below so that you can print it out, you can practice with it, you can even print it out and put your hands on it and you know if you don't have a machine yet or you're just interested to know. But that is, this is actually what all the keys are. So I'm gonna try to leave this up for most of the video and again it will be linked down below but this is what all the keys are. Okay, so as you can see again it shows that the number bar is up top and I'm not really going to read to you what you can obviously see on the screen, but I'll just point out a couple things to you. So as you can kind of tell, um, all the consonants or a lot of consonants are up here at the top bar and then your vowels are down here. And then this middle bar is an asterisk bar, which really if we write something and then we mess up or we want to delete it, we can press the asterisk bar and it will actually take it away. Um, and that's how you kind of can delete things. Also, you can write certain words with an asterisk and it can come out as something else. Like the word support and sport. I actually write them the same way on my machine. And that's actually a really good one to show you guys because it actually is in steno, basically how it comes out on here, if that makes sense. I changed my view to steno so that you guys can kind of see more of what my I'm writing in steno, but yeah, basically in steno, the word sport shows out how you guys can read it as well to a person who doesn't know how to read steno. But I also write the word support the same way, but I just add an asterisk. So it's sport with an asterisk, but programmed into my um, computer and into my software, it will come out support. So when I hear the word support, I write sport with an asterisk, but sport without the asterisk is just the word sport. So kind of confusing, but you, it gives you more leeway in writing things a similar way when you add that into it. Also, when I write someone's name, I always add an asterisk um, because then I can define it later capped or just kind of specializing it as someone's name. So again, the vowels are down here and actually we write everything phonetic. So we really need to write short A's, long A's, long O's, long I's, things like that. And we can differ differentiate with these as well. Another thing that you guys may have noticed is that there is not every letter on this machine. Um, so for example, I know you can see that there is an L on this right side, but there is not an L on the left side. And how we write words, is phonetically, syllabically, so we start out with our word on the left side and we usually end it on the right side. So, for example, if I wanted to write the word lay, I wouldn't use the L that is actually on the machine over here because the word does not end in L. I need to start it with L. So just like your regular writing or reading a book, you always start with the left side. Well, 
There is actually an L on this left side, and that's what you learn going through school. But if you do the H and the R together, press the middle button, or press the middle line, you can kind of see how it's together. If you press that, it brings it down together, and this is actually an L. And as you can see, it does come up HR, but when we're reading Sino, when it's like that, we technically can kind of see an L, like that is an L to us. So let's do the word lay. So lay, and then lay will have a long A. So now we can't just add just the A because that is a short A. So to make a long A on our machine, we add the EU with the A, so that will come up as lay. So technically this means lay in our steno. That's kind of just a really quick version of how we are putting these keys together to make certain words. Um, you know, and there obviously is some letters over here, like the S is over here. Um, this T and this K pressed together is actually a D. Um, this P and this W is actually a B. And this is an L, like I said, and then there is obviously the other letters. There is a few more combinations, like we have a Y, we have a Q, we have an X on this side, but I don't wanna go too into depth into that. But we can write any word in the whole entire universe just based on hearing it because we write phonetically and syllabically. Okay, so that's the overall of the machine. And really quick, Michael just told me to tell y'all what syllabically and phonetically means in case you don't know, because he was like, I don't know what that means. So phonetically means you know, when you hear, it's all based on sound. So I can hear a word that I've never heard before. Like for example, if I'm doing a medical deposition and they say a medical term like tachycardia, you know, I had never heard that before. I heard it in a deposition and I didn't know how to write it, but I could hear tach, card, yeah. So that's how I wrote it on my machine. So I wrote it in three strokes because it had three syllables and we know what syllables are. So syllabically means that that's how we are hearing it and how we are writing it. Um, strokes on a machine are basically just how many times you're pressing down. So we press down something that's one stroke, two stroke, three stroke. And obviously you wanna try to have as least amount of strokes as possible so that you can write faster. So we also create briefs for certain words. Um, there's also certain endings on the machine, which I didn't go through and again I can go through this in later videos But on the right side of that machine with your right hand um, We can write any kind of ending. There is the ing, the er, the shun ending We can write that on our machine as well Okay, now I kind of wanted to show you guys just a little bit of dictation that you guys will hear at 225 words a minute, which that is what we graduate and are certified at. And I wanted you guys to kind of hear how quickly that is and just kind of see my hands moving to that. And maybe if you have a keyboard in front of you or just on your phone or something, try to type and keep up with that. And it will just show you that you cannot keep up on a normal keyboard, even if you are a really, really fast typer on a normal keyboard, you cannot keep up. So it's gonna be kind of cool to just show you guys how it works and how the hands move. One other thing that I forgot to show you guys was there is, I guess I didn't use the right term because I don't explain this very much, but the left side is called your left bank and the right side is called your right bank. And when you hold all the left bank down together, that is your cue. So when someone asks a question, you identify that. Um, and then you continue on with what they're asking. And then the right side is your answer bank. So you hold some of these down together to make the answer bank. So you do have to identify speakers as well um, while you're writing. Um, I'm gonna have Mike play some dictation, that some old dictation from school. So it's gonna sound a little silly because they talk, they're timing how they talk. But I'm just gonna write and hopefully you guys can see some of this. Um, again, it's just gonna be in steno but you'll get to kind of just see my hands moving. I guess that's the important part. Further towards the back of the trailer than the middle. Your answer, that's correct. That was your testimony at your deposition. That is correct. Does that refresh your recollection that in fact, this deposition was taken back on the 7th of November, 2007? I do remember that deposition. Correct. It's your testimony today that Ms. Young's vehicle is green. Correct. Sir, do you do agree that as you were approaching where the lanes change from two lanes to three and then four lanes, Okay, so that was my old school dictation and I think they were doing some at 180, some at 200, some at 220 and I swear some of those spurts were at 240. So those are words per minute and pretty fast. That was actually pretty fast. Um, but that's really all I want to show you guys today. Again, I don't want to go too into depth about how to connect all these words together. I can do future videos on that, but that will 
be a long time from now but i will include that printout down below so that you guys can maybe just look at that to learn a little bit more if you guys have any questions about this video the previous video future videos that you guys want to see comment below and let me know because again as i said in my first video i want this to kind of be open this series to be open to what you guys want to see. I don't have too many videos planned for this. I kind of want to just leave it open to if someone suggests they want to see a certain thing. One I do know that I'm going to do is I do want to talk about different things you can do with court reporting and mainly focused on court positions and deposition positions. And so really into depth into those two things and how to kind of the lifestyle of those as well, the pay, things like that. But if y'all have any questions, put them down below um, and any other future video ideas. And I hope you guys enjoyed this and hope Hopefully it wasn't too confusing and I love talking about this so if you want to just chat follow me on Instagram ask me anything you guys want I hope to see you guys in episode 3 pretty soon and yeah thanks for watching hope to see you guys soon bye